Hey everyone, today I want to walk you through a case study, a real patient of mine. This is a lady who's 54 years old, she has Hashimoto's, hives, and angioedema. So there's a lot for us to get into. So she has this angioedema about, angio about two times per week. Now, that's when you get this big swelling, uh, sometimes look like an allergic reaction. It can happen in your lips, your face. In her case, it can happen in your mouth and in your throat, and it can uh, compromise your airway. She also has weight gain, which is not surprising for Hashimoto's, and constant fatigue, also not surprising for Hashimoto's. So with that in mind, let's get into it. I think if you have Hashimoto's or you know someone with hives or hopefully you don't know anybody that has angioedema, I think you're going to find this case study very helpful. All right, so let's get started with the history. Now, uh, the history is very important. You guys heard me say this before because there's clues in the history very often that are going to tell me what is happening, what do I do about it? Because just because she's got Hashimoto's, just because she has hives, just because she has angioedema, that doesn't immediately tell me what I do about it. Because uh, the label is a label, but it doesn't tell you exactly what's happening physiologically, functionally, right? So let's dig in and see what her history tells us. So in 2008, in December, she was diagnosed with a thyroid nodule. And Hashimoto's is associated with certain types of thyroid nodules. Uh, about three years after that, the hive started, apparently for no reason, came out of nowhere. Uh, and eventually that progressed into this angioedema swelling stuff and required prednisone, steroid, in order to get it to calm down. Because what do steroids do? They are immune system, immune system squashers. That's what they do. Oh, look at that. Then she was diagnosed with Hashimoto's and prescribed Lavoxin. Now remember, Hashimoto's most common uh, organ-specific autoimmune condition, most common cause of hypothyroidism in places that, have, uh, that are iodine replete, like the states. And Lavoxyl is just synthetic T4, so she wasn't making enough T4, and so she had to get prescribed Lavoxyl. That's fine. Now, in some people, uh, when they become hypothyroid, it, it makes them a little bit inflamed. And so when you replace the hormones that they can't make, it does de-inflame them a little bit. So let's see what happens with her. So once her Lavoxyl dosage was up to 100 micrograms per day, the hives went away. Okay, so that means probably what was happening is she had some inflammation, and when she was hypothyroid, Inflammation increased, triggered the hives. Once she got a Lavoxyl, dose, uh, Lavoxyl dosage kind of at 100, uh, the hives went away. Okay, sounds good. But 2014, the hives started again, okay, and then they kind of receded. And what we're seeing here over time is she's getting hives. They're starting to become a little more frequent, but they are kind of going away. Sometimes she has to use steroids. Sometimes she doesn't. Now, in April 2018, the hives started again, as well as the angioedema. And this is dangerous, right? Because as I explained earlier, uh, angioedema is when you get this huge swelling, right? This blood vessel swelling. And if you get it in your throat, it can compromise your airway and, you know, you can die. Uh, it's certainly very scary looking. Uh, so through the course of these last few years, uh, she developed an anemia of an unknown cause. Now, again, Anemia means you don't have enough red blood cells, you don't have enough, one of the following, low red blood cells, low hemoglobin, or low hematocrit on blood work. But anemia does not tell you the whole story. You have to then classify the anemia. Uh, you can look at the MCV and see are the red blood cells normal, small, or big. But you can also have to classify it, is it an iron deficiency anemia, is it a B12 anemia, a folic acid anemia, a blood loss anemia, an anemia from chronic inflammation. Uh, she has had iron infusions. Uh, the last one before I saw her was eight months prior to me seeing her the first time. So hers must be iron, right? She must be iron, I would think, because that's how you get an iron infusion. And I'll just tell you, for an iron infusion to usually get ordered, um, you usually have to be you know, anemic, and your ferritin's usually got to be single digits. Uh, so it's usually got to be pretty bad. Now, she was also recently told to add B12 to her regimen. Now, maybe she's developing a B12 deficiency. I can tell you when someone has an iron deficiency, and a B12 deficiency, I'm immediately thinking of different autoimmune conditions that can do that. I'm also thinking of celiac disease or something similar uh, that can also do it. Now, uh, before I saw her uh, initially, she was just coming off a course of prednisone because she needed steroids again because of the highs in the angioedema. All right, so again, she just came off that course of prednisone. She's taking, when I first saw her, Lavoxyl, which is T4, Cytomel, which is T3, and I have other videos on you know, why I think uh, T3 is used and why it's usually not a it's not a great idea because you can't mimic how your body naturally takes T4 and converts it into T3 and how it distributes it. Um, a lot of people use it. Most people that end up getting prescribed Cytomel or because they either remain symptomatic after taking their T4, uh, and they usually have some sort of conversion problem, but conversion problems can be handled very often and you don't have to use the Cytomel. 
Also taking Benadryl, Zyrtec, Ferrex, which is iron, vitamin D, and B12. All right, cool. Now, she also reports some associated symptoms of hair loss. We see that all the time in Hashimoto's patients. Cold hands and feet, pale and dry skin. Now, I want to point out, she has those symptoms even though her TSH is normal and her T4 is normal and her T3 is normal. And that's because, and I have a video on this you can look at later, there's essentially two kinds of thyroid problems. You can have a quantity problem or you can have a usage problem. Hashimoto's creates both of those because Hashimoto's uh, will make you hypothyroid by destroying your ability to make thyroid hormones. So your TSH goes up and your T4 or T3 goes down. That's a quantity problem. And the blood work can tell you that, right? Blood work can tell you how much of those things are floating around. But blood work cannot tell you whether you're using those things. That usage is what happens at your thyroid hormone receptors, but we can't test those, right? So you can have thyroid hormone receptors that are not functioning right, and that makes your blood, blood work look normal, but you don't feel normal and you don't work right, okay? You feel like your thyroid's off. And I, that's probably 90% of the Hashimoto's patients I see. They're taking medication. They are normal on TSH and T4, but they don't feel good. And it's because there's some sort of problem with either how they're using the hormones and inflammation is the number one thing that can make that happen, uh, or they've got their autoimmunity is just is not controlled. So there's really no family history. Interesting. No one else in the family has hives that she know of. As far as she knows, no one has Hashimoto's. So it's an interesting little case about where did that come from. Now, interestingly and important, her diet is not restricted at all. She is not following any special diet, which I can tell you she's immediately going to do because I know she has Hashimoto's and a couple of things she definitely needs to be avoiding. So, ordered some blood work. She had pretty limited resources, so I couldn't, uh, there was no lymphocyte phenotyping test back when I first saw her. And she really couldn't do uh, tissue antibody testing. She just had money to do kind of, you know, regular blood work. So, this is what we found. The labs come back. Um, she's been off the prednisone for 30 days because if I did the labs right after she did the steroids, it might, you know, skew things. She's been off the prednisone for a month, but she's still having to take the Zyrtec and the Benadryl daily to keep, to keep the hives and the angioedema at bay. Still having fatigue. All right, cool. So what did her blood work show? And I, I don't know how legible this is. I did my best to kind of clean it up. But what we'll see here is in this red blood cell business, right? It can get a little confusing, right? Because her red blood cell count is a little bit high that doesn't really mean that much in the bigger context because check this out, her hemoglobin of 12, that's borderline. I'm going to say that that's low, right? That's anemic, okay? Now, the MCV is low, okay? That's how big her red blood cells also They are microcytic. The mean corpuscular hemoglobin is low. The mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration is low. The RDW, that is, that's an anemia, right? That is definitely anemia. And the interesting thing is, if you look at her ferritin down here, that's a 38, which is not low by the lab range, but not, not a good one. Uh, 50 is what you're looking for kind of as a minimum. So she might have still this kind of iron deficiency anemia because these red blood cells are small and pale, and that's what happens when you have an iron deficiency anemia. Now, does that totally relate to the hives and the angioedema? Probably not. I mean, an iron deficiency is not causing her to have hives, not causing her to have angioedema, but it is something that's got to be addressed. And her eosinophil percent is high. Now, eosinophils are a type of white blood cell that are classically associated with allergic responses and uh, parasites. But basically, eosinophils just line uh, your GI tract and your lungs. And if, <clears throat> if your immune system in those areas is starting to light up, then your eosinophil count goes up. It just tells you that, yeah, she's got inflammation. Her vitamin D, though, was a 72, which is pretty good. I mean, most of the time, people with Hashimoto's, uh, their vitamin D is terrible. Now, she's taking vitamin D. She's absorbing the vitamin D. I probably don't need to give her vitamin D. Vitamin D is immune system regulatory. Very, very important. But again, if, if you don't have a baseline vitamin D, don't start taking vitamin D because you don't know how much you should take, and you certainly have to retest. So again, don't take this as, uh, hey, I'll just run with what he says he did for her because it may not work for you. It may not be appropriate for you. All right, there's the ferritin. Okay, cool. Now, three months of treatment. So, I didn't tell you what I did for treatment, but let me just tell you that uh, I put her on a uh, very strict, you know, 100% gluten-free, dairy-free diet, and we did some immune system modulation. Now, remember, I didn't have an immune system, I uh, didn't have a lymphocyte map to look at, so I said, hey, I know it's an autoimmune problem that she has. I know the hives and angioedema are definitely an immune system reaction. What are things I can do for that? Now, 
There's some things I did. I'm not going to tell you what they were because, again, I don't want you trying to self-treat. But I can tell you what happened. Uh, three months after starting that, she says she feels better now than she has in years. That's great. <laughs> I like that. She hadn't had any hives at all in three months. That's also very, very good. She's had one episode of angioedema. Okay, she was having that, those, uh, she was having those two times per week. So it's definitely a decrease in that. And she's continuing the diet and the supplement protocol that I put her on a few months earlier. Again, why gluten-free, dairy-free? Well, because uh, those are the two worst foods you can eat if you have Hashimoto's, mainly because they cross-react with thyroid peroxidase antibodies. And what that means is they're molecular, those foods are molecularly similar uh, to the thyroid peroxidase antibodies. And so eating those has a real high chance in 95% of Hashimoto's patients of making you worse. Uh, also, the genotype that makes you have gluten sensitivity or wheat sensitivity is the same genotype as Hashimoto's essentially. All right, now what about six months later? All right, what about six months later? Well, here's a quick summary that she sent me. And I'll kind of let you read that, but you know, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll narrate. My problem started in 2011. Now, this lady is, uh, uh, she has a real South Boston accent. I'm not going to try to do it in her accent, but imagine someone from South Boston reading this. Uh, my problem started in 2011 with unexplained hives and progressed to constant episodes of angioedema that would land me in the emergency room a few times a week. Think about that. Think about the cost of that. I spent years being prescribed medications that were making me worse instead of better. I was living on prednisone and taking more pills than I could count, but my symptoms kept getting worse. The hives covered my whole body every day. The face and throat swelling was scary, random, and debilitating. I mean, imagine that. Imagine a couple times a week you've got to go to the, How do you go to work? Like, how, how do you function? Like, you're scared. Uh, you could die. I was barely functioning. Uh, I'm in Boston, and I spent days going to doctors and being referred to specialists in some of the best hospitals in the country, but not one of the specialists could identify what was causing my problems. I was taking prednisone daily, but we still need to go to the ER for an IV steroid to control the angioedema. That's bad. Now, keep in mind... She's had three months with no hives at all, right, before this. And then she continues to say, uh, when I found Dr. Clark's website and watched his videos, I realized that he was describing exactly what was happening with me. I contacted his office, started the process to become a patient. Uh, I've now been following his protocol for six months, and right now I'm completely symptom-free. I've had no hives, no angioedema. I'm off the prednisone and other medications. I've lost weight, gained energy, and haven't felt this good in years. I am grateful every day I stumbled uh, my health was spiraling out of control. Uh, I appreciate that Dr. Clark treated my health like a puzzle. And it is a puzzle, and everybody's puzzle is different. He was the first doctor of dozens that actually took the time to listen to my concerns. I'm going to get misty out here. Uh, I described each piece of the puzzle, and he was committed to finding a solution. So I'm thankful. Yeah, I'm thankful too. I mean, I'm, and, and is that where it stops, though? Right? Well, that's six months. Well, what about after six months? What about after seven months? No hives or angioedema in the last two months? After seven months of treatment, she's taking no steroids, no Zyrtec or Benadryl, continuing the protocol I gave her. What about nine months? Still no hives or angioedema at all? No steroids, no Zyrtec or Benadryl, continuing the protocol? Okay, what if we just, what if we just extend it further out? So she, so she had no hives or angioedema at one year after starting treatment, after one year, three months, after one year, six months, up to three years. I last talked to her uh, three years and six months after starting treatment. I talked to her, uh, emailed her a couple of months ago, and here's what she says. Hey, I'm doing good. No problems. My TSH numbers are up and down, so I'm adjusting the voxel to keep it in check, but otherwise I'm great. So no hives, no angioedema for three years and six months after starting treatment. And you saw her story, like she went to some of the best places uh, that were available. Now, and that's not to toot my own horn, I'm just saying that I do look at things like a puzzle, and why am I sharing this case with you? Because if you've got highs and angioedema or Hashimoto's, you better find someone that will treat it like a puzzle, that will dig, be a detective, and figure out what's going on. Now, do I bat 100%? Absolutely not, no one does. But you don't have to settle for suffering. I, I'm thankful that, and I'm, I appreciate her kind words, uh, but you don't have to, you don't have to settle, right? You got to make sure you're working with someone that really understands Hashimoto's, understands the immune system, knows how to order the right test, knows what test to order, how to interpret those tests, even if you don't have all the tests that you want, and how to follow up and determine, is it working? Okay. So this is one of many cases that I've had with hives and generally have pretty good results with those. So if you've got hives and angioedema, and especially with Hashimoto's, there's a connection between those. I think I have another video on that I might link to. 
uh, make sure you're working with someone that knows that there is a link and knows some of the test to order to get to the bottom of it so that you don't have to suffer. And I'll see you next time.